The fuel rates are achieving new heights throughout the country. On the other hand, government of India has just announced an increased subsidy on electric two-wheelers. Almost feels like government is forcing us to switch to electric. But the real question is, are we ready for this? To answer this question, I've got with me the Aethers 450 Plus, which will cost you about 1,23,231 rupees. By this time, most of the viewers might have stopped watching this video, saying that it's way too much to pay for a scooter. Well, this is what the smaller picture is, and it clearly says that we are not ready for the EVs. But this is what the bigger picture says. You save a lot of money when compared to this premium that you're going to pay for an EV. And that's exactly what you guys need to know. Let's start with the basics first. You get a 2.71 kilowatt lithium ion battery, which is IP67 rated, water resistant and dust proof. And it comes with a 3 year warranty as well. This motor gives you a peak power of 5.4 kilowatt and a torque of 22 Nm. It will give you a riding range of 70 kilometers in eco mode, 60 kilometers in ride and 50 kilometers in sport mode. This also comes with a regen system, which means as the battery will charge itself up when you decelerate or use the brakes, but only at speeds greater than 20 kmph. You get a telescopic fork at front and a monoshock at the rear. You also get a 90 by 90 section 12 inch tubeless tires at both front and rear. You have dual disc brakes as well with a 200 mm disc at front and 190 mm at the rear with CBS. Curb weight is about 111 kilos with a 160 mm ground clearance and 765 mm of seat height. You also have a 22 litres of boot space which can easily take either the portable charger or the helmet provided by the Aether, but can't fit both of them. You get a nice LED light for this boot along with two cubby holders. You do get an all LED setup. I especially like the Aether branding on the headlamps and the rear indicators are nicely integrated into the design. So you actually don't have anything that stays out of the body and get damaged. Even the side stand and footrest for the rear passengers are integrated. Also the exposed part of its frame adds up to the design and its uniqueness. The seat is wide enough and the grab rails are quite functional as well. Now this stuff right here is the real talking point of the scooter, which is the display. You get a 7 inch full LCD display, obviously touch. You can choose the ride modes with a single tap or use these buttons to navigate through. You have the battery percentage and estimated ride range. Then you get an odometer and two trip meters along with one for your current ride. It can display you the distance, real time efficiency, average speed and the duration of your ride as well. Then in the settings. You have a general tab where you get the info regarding your vehicle. Then you have settings. You can adjust the cluster brightness as well or set it to auto. You can choose between dark and light themes as well and I prefer it to keep dark. Next you have sound control for return indicators and park assist. And then you have this auto indicator which I think we can use while using the GPS only. Then you have guide me home lights which means the lights will stay on for a few seconds after you turn off the scooty. Then you have real time efficiency and last incognito mode. Then you have the errors if there are any then it will show you here. And last is actually my favorite the documents part. You can upload all your important documents using the Aether app. You can expand this document and zoom in for clarity. And last is shut down. Suppose you're not going to use your scooty for a while, then you can just shut it down. It will save the battery. So enough of this on paper stuff and see what it actually feels to ride this scooter. Since it's an EV, it doesn't make any sort of noise when it starts up. And that sometimes might be an issue because you don't know whether your scooty is on or not. Well, Aether makes things a bit easy over here. Suppose that you try to start your scooty and something is bothering, it will let you know. Well, the side stand's done. Okay, now the kill switch. Okay, press the brake and start. And here we go. Right now I'm riding in eco mode, which uh, gives you the best mileage. Sorry, best range. And it's actually these kind of situations, these kind of roads, which scares me a lot. When riding the scooter, obviously, because it actually has a, some kind of weird 
but large air intake. In eco mode, the scooter is quite smooth and the power delivery is quite linear. There's nothing aggressive. Everything just takes place in a smooth and linear fashion. The eco mode is best suited for these kind of situations, like uh, traffic ones, where you don't have much of a choice but to stay below 40 50 kmph. And even though you are riding in eco mode, it doesn't mean that the scooty will just start off very slowly and then pick up the pace. It's not like that. It has enough punch to get itself going quite easily and quickly, even in the eco mode. So in eco mode, the scooty will go up to 50 to 55 kmph maximum top speed. Out on highways to keep up with other vehicles, you will have to switch it to ride mode like this. And now the scooty picks up speed pretty easily and it can go maximum up to 60 to 65 kmph in the ride mode. What I have experienced so far is that on highways, ride mode is quite enough for you to keep up with other vehicles and basically cover the distance quite easily. Actually with the EVs, it's the skill that you need to know about when to use the riding modes when to actually when to use which ride mode if you are in a city traffic or place where you can't go at much high speeds then you better keep it on eco mode on highways i will definitely prefer it to keep on ride mode because sport mode is something on which you want to have some fun Ride mode will definitely do the job when you are out on highways. It's actually the situation like these where you have a nice empty road in front of you where you would like to switch it to sport mode. And off we go. Oh, just see how the pickup goes. I'm already up to 72. In sport mode, they have claimed that the scooty can go up to 80 kmph, although I have went to 90 as well, as you can see, I am on 86 now. And 90. I am sure now the speed is more than 90, but the speedometer is digitally locked to show till 90 only. It is actually fun to ride in sport mode, but only if you have enough battery left. In that case, I don't, so time to switch it on ride mode. You can change the ride modes on the go as well, but you'll have to decelerate for that, like this. And now the switch is engaged, so you can now switch to, let's say, Eco. And when I accelerate again, the switch disengages. So you'll have to keep this in mind. And now the battery percentage is below 20%, as you can see. And now I'll not be able to switch between the riding modes, I'll have to stay in the Eco mode. Suppose you are riding with a pillion and you need to take your scooty back. You have the option of reverse gear. Just slide this up. And now it's active. And the speed is limited to 3 km per hour. And in case you need to go forward, just press this button. And now you can go forward. Speed is limited to 5 km per hour. To exit the reverse mode, just slide it back. Well, I must say that it's a fun, economic and most importantly, eco-friendly way to travel. You'll definitely turn a few heads around with its futuristic sound that comes when you accelerate, which by the way, I liked a lot. Now, talking about the charging, you can go for the Aether Dot, which can be mounted on any wall slash pillar. And if you don't have any, you'll get a separate stand for it. Or you can also opt for the portable charger, which goes into any normal 5 ampere socket. You do have the convenience of charging other EVs using this charger. Both the chargers will charge from 0 to 80% in 4 hours and 30 minutes and will take another 45 minutes for the remaining 20%. But just ask yourself, how many times will you put a charging on 0%? Think about it. Charging speed is of 1 km in every minute and you can check the charge status via the Aether app. Now, what Aether says is that you'll need electricity of 15 to 20 rupees to full charge this EV. Just take a look at this. You can go up to 70 km in just 20 rupees. 
that's 3.5 kilometers in a rupee. Comparing this with Axis 125, which gives you a mileage of 65 kmpl, it can go just 0.65 kilometers in a rupee. I think you can do the remaining math now. Also, there's a buyback assure program with the Ether, according to which if you have maintained your scooter properly, done time to time servicing, and let's say after three years of experience, you're not that happy with the scooter. So you can give it back to Ether and they will give you 70,000 rupees. All of this sounds so nice and sweet. Perfect scooter fulfilling all you need. So is it totally perfect? No, there are a bit of flaws like these mirrors. Looks good, but functioning, not so good. Also the switch gear, it doesn't provide you any sort of feedback and at times, you might not know that the switch is on or not. Floorboard is a bit high, so tall riders might see their knee touching the handlebar. Another thing is this motor. When we accelerate hard, there's this little inconvenient noise which you'll have to get used to. And the last is the competition. When compared to Revolt RV400, which by the way is an electric bike and shouldn't be compared to a scooter, but since they fall in the same price range, I think we should. So. The Revolt will give you a range anywhere from 80 kilometers all the way up to 150 kilometers. Plus, it charges quickly as well. When compared to other electric scooters, I think Aether is the best. But this can also be discussed in a separate video. So this is what the bigger picture looks like. And what I feel is that if not now, then soon enough, India will be ready to switch to electric. If you like this video, if you like the Aether 450 Plus, then do hit that like button. Share this with your friends and stay subscribed for more quality automotive content.